topic of today is problems are stepping stones. <laughs> problems are stepping stones. Problems are stepping stones. Problems are simply stepping stones. They are only stepping stones. Problems are stepping stones. Problems are stepping stones. Is that not beautiful? <laughs> Problems are only stepping stones. You see, everything, <laughs> everything depends on, <laughs> on, your, on your attitude. Everything depends on your response. Everything depends on how you see things. So if you are going to, if you are one of the ones that are seeing uh, problems as catastrophic, as a catastrophe, then that is very bad. And that it's going to be catastrophic for you. If you are the one that is seeing problems as, uh, as tragedy, well, I'm sorry, it's just going to be tragic and tragedy for you. But, you know, a new approach and a new way you should be looking at problem, problems is to look at problems as stepping stones. Now, what's a stepping stone? You know, have you, I'm sure every one of us knows stairs, staircases, right? If you, want, uh, if you want to go from first floor to second floor, you use staircase, you use stair, uh, you know, you use, you know, yeah. So, and uh, if you want to, you know, that is those stairs, those steps, those steps you step on, that is, those are st stepping stones. Uh, it's just like you want to climb up on a wall, on a tree somewhere, you have what they call ladder. So ladder, in that sense, they are like stepping stones. So those are stepping stones, things that you would not have been able to attain otherwise, if not, if you don't put something on, uh, uh, you know, to help you. So stepping stones are help. Stepping stones are aid. You know, things that help you, aid you to get from one spot to the other. Okay, it's especially, you need stepping stones if there are gaps. Okay, you see a gap now, you want to go from here to here. And how do you jump? You, you, there's a space, there's a gap between where you are and where you want to go to. So stepping stones are stones or stair that you put here, staircases that you put here between this place where you are and where you are going to. And uh, those you know, stairs, those stones that you step on, you could step on them one by one, one by one, one by one to get here. So those are stepping stones. So you don't need to jump, you don't need to fly, you don't need to fall, you don't need to become invisible, you don't need to be teletransported. You just step on one stone after the other, step on one stone after the other, step on one stone after the other. And by just climbing like that, you get to where you're going to. That is how, in my house here, we have four, four floors. So that is how we go from our first floor to the fourth floor without a, without a lift or an elevator. Because it's just four floors. We don't have a lift and an elevator. In this house, anything after fifth floor, you have an elevator. But in this, not in this house, in this country, in this country, if, if your house is higher than six floors or nine floors, you must have an elevator. But here, we don't have an elevator because we're only four, four floors in my house. But we have staircases, you see. So we just, we just climb on them. Those are stepping stones. They make life easier. They make, they don't make, I don't need to become invisible. I don't need to become teletransported all the time. I just need to step, put one a leg on the other, uh, on one, I mean, put a leg on the, on the step stone and then put another leg on the next stone, put another leg on the next stone. And, uh, uh, so that's how we, you go to stairs. You go through stairs. You climb up. You climb up. So, uh, yeah, so, Stepping stones are, are very helpful in life. Now, what are the stepping stones in life? I've told you what the stepping stones are when it comes to climbing uh, floors or when it comes to climbing walls. But what are the, what are the, what are the parallel understanding of uh, stairs or staircases in, in life? Well, the stair and the stepping stones of life 
are actually problems. The stepping stones of life are actually problems. It's just like saying, uh, you know, now, it's just like saying you want to climb from this, my first floor where I am now, to the fourth floor, and you said, I don't want to use the stairs, I don't want to use the staircase, I don't want to use the stones, the stepping stones. So how do you want to get to the fourth floor? Ah, uh, well, I don't know, because I'm afraid of the stairs. You don't want to use the stairs, then will you fly? Is that how it happens to most of us? We don't want to go through problems to get to our purpose. We don't want to go through problems to get to our uh, our targets. We don't want to go through problems to get to our goals, our mission, to fulfill our destiny, our purpose. That is, we the target that we put ahead of us, the vision that we set before us. But you see, the only way. You could get to where you are going. The only way you could get to your target, the only way you could get to your targeted goal is by using stairs or stepping stones. And what are stepping stones? Stepping, problem, problem, stepping stones are problems. So the problems that God allows to come to our way, the problems that you encounter in the process of going, I mean, of life, of or going to attain your goals. Those are the stepping stones that God uses to bring you to the place you plan or dream of becoming or coming to. So let's say somebody right now is in my house here where we have four floors uh, and, <laughs> and uh, he's saying, I want to get to the fourth floor, but without using the staircase. I don't want to use the stairs. I don't want to use the stairs. Okay, you don't want to use the stairs and you are just standing there. And you know what will happen? <laughs> uh, you will stand there for five minutes. You've just been looking. How can I get there? How can I? You don't want to use stairs. You don't want to use a uh, uh, ladder. And you just want to go there without using your legs, without stepping on anything. Okay? You will stand there one year. You will stand there two years. You will stand there three years until you die. You know, that is what happens with people in life. We want to go to our goal. We want to go higher in life. We want to go to a higher target, higher goal. We want to go higher. And then instead of stepping on something and go through the process of going higher, you know what we normally do? We sit that there on the on the ground floor and we just dream. Oh, I wish that God will. Some of us just dream. Oh, I plan to be this, this, this one day. I plan to be this, this, this one day. One day by the grace of God, I will become this. One day I will grow up. One day I will become this. I know I will become this. These are dreamers. You will never become anything if you don't go through the process of standing up, raising your leg, one leg, and raising the other one, and stepping on those stones and those stairs, and then one by one follow the process, go through the troubles, overcome. Because it is, it is a challenge, kind of, to, for you to stand up from where you are. Then, you know, then begin to pick one leg up. So, and the other one. And this that is overcoming obstacles. Because each one of those stones are obstacles. So, because the higher you go, the higher the stairs become. And the higher the obstacles are. The higher the challenges are. That's how it is in life as well. So, if you just stand there and say, well, I don't want to go through that trouble of, you know, climbing stairs. I mean, my legs will pain me. I mean, I, you know, climbing stairs is not just for me. My back is uh, hurting. My legs are often hurting. I will never be able to climb those stairs. Well, you will stand there. You will, become, will do like what many Christians do. They just stand there and, you know, live and dream that they want to become somebody. That is one thing that will happen to you if you don't want to go through the stairs and the stepping stones of trouble to your destiny. You will just stand there and be, and be dreaming. Now, a lot of people are like that. They are simply dreamers. They are simply dreamers. If you don't want to go to take on troubles, if you don't want to take on problems, if you don't want to go and overcome problems, you are just going to be a dreamer. That's one. Other people, they just stand there and hoping for a miracle. And that is what is happening in many of our churches today. Many people are dreaming. They have big pictures. They have big dreams. They have, you know, great ideas of who they want to become or what they want to become. But they sit down there and just hope. They live in hope. Some are dreaming. Some are hoping. 
Those ones are hoping that, oh, maybe a miracle will happen one day or the other. They are even praying, some of them. Some of them are even fasting. Some of them are even calling on men of God to pray for them, to lay hands on them. Some of them are even uh, giving tithe and offering or giving some other money, some breakthrough offering or whatever offering or prophet offering or any kind of thing. They give money just expecting that something will just come and, you know, take them over there to where what they, they need to be. They are deceivers, both the ones who are praying for them and the ones who are expecting miracles. They are all deceiving themselves. If you are not willing to go out there and take the bull by the, by the, by the horns, and if you are not ready to go and begin to really roll up your sleeves and begin to really work hard for to become who you need to become, you will never become anything. You will never go from that first floor, from that ground floor to the ninth floor or to the tenth floor where you want to go to. You need stepping stones. You need stepping stones. That is how life is. You don't just sit down there and say you'll become somebody someday, one day. You don't just sit down there and think, thinking that you are, because you are praying, so God will just leave those ones who are stepping on, who are overcoming problems, who are resolving issues, who are using, you know, staircase, I mean, stairs and stepping on, on, uh, on, on, uh, on problems and uh, on stones and, you know, doing their best. It will just leave them and abandon them and just come and take you and pick you and put you on top. You know, without any experience, without any struggle, without... You know, God doesn't work like that. So, the stairs and the stepping stones of life are problems. So, problems are stepping stones of life. Don't despise them. Don't run away from them. Run to them. Look for them. And uh, that is how you become who you become. I mean, look at the Bible. Everybody you look at, it is problem that propel them to whoever they are today. Problem propel people. If you look at the life of Abraham, <laughs> problem, problems, why is stepping stones? Have a look at Abraham. All problems. For, to, for him to go from one level to the other, he, he, was, he was always getting from one, he was always going from one problem to the other. Why? Just like you climb stairs. You need to go from one problem to the other. You need to step on one stone. From one stone, you need to step on the other. So, so that is how life is. I mean, if you talk about Abraham, for example, I mean, his problem started when God told him to leave his city. That, but that problem became a stepping stone. It was the first step in him becoming the father of nations and the father of faith. Then he ran into another problem, the problem that he couldn't have a son. But, and he couldn't have a child. He couldn't have children. Well, that was another stepping stone for him to become who, he wanted to, who God wanted him to become. Then he had to go to a place where he didn't even know what country was going to, what city was going to. In fact, there was no city. <laughs> if there was no city, he had to just imagine it by himself. So that was another big stepping stone for him to now take on that challenge and begin to go and look for a city that, has, that, is, not, that is not even there in the first place. Then he went, he started moving, and it, as he was moving, he ran into the dwellers of the land, the inhabitants of the land that he was passing by, and they were fighting him. Some of them were, you know, <laughs> they were spoiling his job. He would dig, dig up a well, they would go and, you know, you know, close it up and all that. Those were all horrible challenges that he was going through. Well, <laughs> you know, <laughs> he needed it to become who God wanted him to become. That was another stepping stone. Then they had all this struggle with women and the maid and another wife, then another woman, then another woman. Those were stepping stones for him to become the father of nation that he eventually became. So do you think, you? let me ask you this question. Do you really think, do you really think that Abraham could have become who he became without those challenges, without those problems? Do you really think that Abraham would have been known as the father of nations without overcoming any problem at all? What nation? What father then? Or do you think that Abraham would have been called the father of faith without even him exercising any faith to do anything by faith, without him going through any struggle at all? You know, it's not practical. It's, it's, it's impossible. So also it is impossible for you to become anybody or anything of significance without looking for troubles, without embracing problems and troubles as your stepping stones. 
So, you know, and, and as a matter of fact, like I've said every day since I started this series on Monday, as a matter of fact, we are all actually created to resolve problems. You know, the only purpose for which we are here, apart from salvation and other things, is to resolve problems. You resolve problems not for yourself, but to solve problems for God. Resolve problems of the earth. We were all sent here to solve problems. Like I said to you many times, that everything about you is about solving problems. Everything around us is about solving problems. Your house that you are living in is solving problems. For problems of accommodation. If you without the house, rain and sun will be beating on you. Your shoes are solving problems. Because without your shoes, you you know, you be thongs and all that will be entering nails will be entering your, your feet, your, your soul, the soul of your feet. You know, your clothes are solving problems. Otherwise, you'll be walking in with nakedness. You know, then they also solve the problem of my bow ties solving problem, the pro problem of beauty, attractiveness, attraction. You know, your, 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 you know, this book is solving problems because, people, you know, I'm bringing solutions to people. This cup is solving problems. I mean, this, this thing here, this, this is my uh, cord for a comp iPad cord. It's solving problems. That's why I have it. <laughs> That's why I give money for it. You know, this uh, Facebook that you are used to watch me, it's, it's, it's solving problems. You know? <laughs> Even you are not needed if you cannot solve problems. The whole life is about life solving, solving problems. My, my mouth is solving problems. That's why I'm solving problems of talking to you right now. And it's solving another problem when I'm going to eat. My nose is solving problems because it's through it that I'm getting my oxygen. And my eyes are solving problems because that's how I'm able to read what you are writing. And that's how you are able to see me. My ears are solving problems because that's how I'm, going to, I'm able to hear what people are saying. My ears, everything is about problems in life. Everything is about problems in life. We are all created to solve problems. And so you cannot now say that you don't like problems or you hate problems or you want to run away from problems. It's not possible. They are your stepping stones to destiny. You are useless if you don't solve problems. I mean, you are not needed if you are not solving problems. So your life, you are all created to solve problems. So suffer, but what I'm saying today, problems are stepping stones. So problem was the stepping stone for Abraham to become who he became. Even Sarah, who would have known the name of Sarah up to now? If not because she had problem of barrenness. <laughs> the fact that you know Sarah is only because he had problem of barrenness. So she had a problem of barrenness. So that problem made her to become a figure and, and a personality in history. You know, it is the problem that she had and she overcame. I mean, that she had that became her a stepping stone. It was the problem that she had that became a stepping stone. I mean, look at uh, look at Noah. What made Noah who Noah is? You think if Noah had not faced the problem of the flood, he would have become who he, who he became? No. It is the flood that made Noah who Noah is. It is the flood and the destruction of, of his age that made Noah who he is. So because there was problem, he resolved that problem by building the ark. And it became Noah, a historic figure. Problem propelled him to his destiny. Problem will propel you to your destiny as well. That's why you should rather look for problems, embrace problems, and resolve problems. Now, I'm not talking about personal problems right now. I'm talking of problems that will resolve the pro I mean, I'm talking of problems that you are resolving that will, you know, answer the needs of humanity. Problems that will answer the needs of people around you. Problems that will answer the needs of your society. Problems that will answer the need of your nation, your country, your economy, your politics, your environment, your social around you, the women, girls, ladies, women, families. Problems that will answer you know, the needs of people around you. When you are solving your own problem, that is... Uh, that is Egocentrism and selfishness. That's not the kind of thing I'm talking about. I'm talking about solving the problems of God. I'm solving about solving the problem of the earth. I'm solving about talking about solving the problems around you. So it is those kind of problems that so problem solving attitude and you know uh, that propel you that become stepping stones into who God wants you to become. So 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 problems are stepping stones. Problems are stepping stones. And uh, 
Noah, Noah, or, you know, like I said, what became who he is because of problems. In fact, even Aaron, Aaron, you know, why did you get to know about Aaron? Is it because he was a relative of Moses? No, because he solved problem for Moses. He solved problem for the earth. That's how Aaron became who he became. Why do we know about Moses? He solved the problem of, of, of captivity, slavery. He took a whole nation out of slavery. That is a stepping stone for him to become a deliverer that he became. To become the name that he became in history. Problems are stepping stones. Joshua, why do we know Joshua today? Why are we talking about Joshua today? Because he solved the problem for a nation. The problems that Joshua solved made him to become, to become a, 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 a renowned person in history. Samuel was his problem solver all the time. From one problem, from one trouble to the other. Why? Because those are the ways for him to become prominent. The amount of problem you resolve determine your greatness. You are great and you are measured by the amount of problems you are able to surmount. So problems are blessings in disguise. But for lazy people, problems are troubles. Problems are tragedies. And people run away from them. <laughs> So we are here to solve problems in life. You are here to solve problems. God has sent you, packaged you for problem solving. I mean, your hands are supposed to solve problems. You know the problem your hands are resolving every day. I mean, your head is resolving problems. Your neck is resolving the problem. Your legs are resolving problems. Your, your chest is resolving problems. Your stomach is resolving problems. Your kidney is resolving problems. Your, your, your lungs are resolving problems. Everything, you are all created in totality to resolve problems. Your emotions are resolving some problem. Your mind is resolving some problem. Your will is resolving some problem. You are all about problem solving in this world altogether. And the more problem you solve, the more you are propelled to a better future and a better destiny. So, 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 uh, you know, you have to change our attitudes from problem, about problems. It's unfortunate that in a lot of charismatic churches and in a lot of Pentecostal churches as well, especially in Africa, People, we are taught to hate problems. We are taught to run away from problems. And we are taught to look at problems as if they were a curse, as if they were a curse. And we have been taught to look at problems in terms of enemies. And we have been taught to look at problems in terms of demons and Satan. We have been taught to look at problems as, as if we are the victims of problems, as if we are not lord over problems. And the, the way God wants us to look at problems is to see problems as if we are over problems. We are over situations. We are over any circumstances. We are the Lord of the universe. We are the little gods of the earth. We are one supposed to be ruling and reigning over problems, over situations. But when you fear problems, you begin to see yourself under problems, under situations, under circumstances. So you are now under, you are, not, you are now beneath, you are not over and um, you know god created us in his own image and for us to be the image of god is to be to rule over everything that life throws at us to rule over situations and circumstances to rule over problems and sorrows to rule over anything we can surmount anything but unfortunately the way churches preach is that we are we are it's, we, we actually problems have been preached to us the way it's been preached to the pagan people to the to the gentiles and you know, to the Gentiles and unbelievers, problem to them is something that is overwhelming, something that is beyond and be, be, you know beyond them, something that is greater than them. So when you begin to look, just like people say, yeah, let me give you an example: the pagans and the Gentiles, unbelievers, paganism. What's paganism? Paganism is you know when you see situations that are that and you view them as greater than you. And because they are greater than you, you turn, you make an altar for them. You make an altar for them. Let's say, for example, thunder. Thunder is coming and killing people in a village. And if those people don't know the Lord, and if they don't know that they have been made a little lower than the angels, and if they don't know that they have been crowned with glory and honor, and that they are the ones to rule on the universe, then they are the rulers of the universe, on, 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 the, on the earth, 
they will not know how to take authority over those thunders and those storms that are coming. You know what they begin to do? They begin to run like that they are walking in fear and because the problem has come. So problem to them is a source of fear. Problem to them is a source of panic and they will try to hide from problems. They try to run away from problems and then the next thing they do if the problem is not stopping is that they begin to pour libation. They begin to look for something. They could take this thing and turn it to the God of thunder. Uh, they could take something that resembles the aura they are feeling. If it's something that will remind them of fire or something that will remind them of what, steel or anything, they just put it there and begin to pray to it and say, oh, oh God, help us, you know. So the God of thunder now. So they are dedicating, you know, is that a problem? They are dedicating the whole God to that problem. So just anything that will help them to resolve their problems. So to make the problem stop. That is what most of us do. It is paganism. That is paganism. Paganism it was, it was, is what makes a creation of God, a, the image of God and the likeness of God, to be afraid of creation, to be afraid of nature. When a human being, the nature of God, the kind of God, the, 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 we are the image of God. God is in us. For when God, it's just like saying God being afraid of nature. It's just like saying God being afraid of his own creation. So, it's, so whenever man be so afraid of problems, of challenges, that it begins to fear and, you know, he loses his lordship over that particular earth, that piece of creation. He loses his edge. He loses his lordship over creation, over the nature in that particular instance. So it's like... Uh, people who are supposed to be ruling on earth, who are supposed to be, you know, managing the earth for God. We are the ones who are supposed to be managing everything for God, managing the affairs of the earth for God. We are the ones who are supposed to be ruling over anything created. If that thunder is created by God, we are on top of it. If that fire is created by God, we are on top of it. If that flood and that tsunami is created by God, we have been placed over it. He said he has placed us over the, the, as the crown of creation. We are the crown of creation. We are supposed to be on top. And God has said we should rule and manage the earth for God. So we are here as the managers of the earth. We are the ones to be subduing the earth. But paganism and, and gentile you know, makes you to feel panic about problems. And, you know, you know paganism and, you know, the gentiles and if, uh, uh, heathen religions, they, they are so afraid. They don't know the lordship and the role of man over any, any occurrence on the earth. So we begin to think that we are nothing. Anything that makes you to think that you are lower than your problem, anything that makes you to be afraid of your problem is reducing the God in you. Anything that makes you to, you know, makes be seeing your situation as if you are helpless, as if you are powerless, is making you to become, you know, a pagan. It's making you to become a non-believer. It's making you to become subjected to creation, subjected to problems, subjected to situations, subjected to circumstances, whereas you are the one supposed to be on top uh, 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 of any situation. You are supposed to rule over any situation. That is why the Bible says that he that is in you is bigger than he that is in the world. At all times, no matter what you are going through, always be assured of that. Always know that you are capable of surmounting any problem. You are capable of resolving any sorrow. You are capable of resolving any challenge, any problem that comes across you. You are actually made to resolve that problem. You are actually made to conquer, to face. If you have not, if you don't, if you feel helpless and you feel that you cannot resolve any problem, it's just because you have not studied it enough. It's just because you have not done your research enough. You have not done your own work enough. But when you do, you know, when you know for sure that you are the head of creation, that you have been placed to be the head of all creation, you will always know that everything is under you. You will not come to the place whereby you begin to put an altar, uh, you know, around some some kind of uh, problems and begin to say, and that's what we do too. Maybe we don't do like the uh, uh, pagans do in Africa by going to get the, uh, some iron and say this is the God of thunder or by going to get some water somewhere, some fish somewhere and say that this is the God of the, the goddess of the sea or by going to uh, something, you know, and saying this is the God of that, this is the God of that. You know, that is what uh, ordinary people would do. 
So anyway, that is a much more complex situation. I don't want you to go into that uh, paganism thing. But you know, don't let any pastor, don't let any religion, don't let any you know religious people, man of God, prophet, anything, make you look small than you are. Make you look smaller than you are. Don't let people put you down. Don't let them, because of your problem, be, be creating an impression as if you are lower than the problem. Don't let any problem force you to think that you are lower than the problem, that you are under the problem, that you are, you know, that you are inferior to any problem. You are not inferior to any problem. You are not inferior to any situation. You are not lower than any situation on the earth. Everything that is under the sun is put under your feet. God has created you to be superior to everything created to everything existing on the earth you might feel overwhelmed that's just your emotion but in the real sense you must know in your mind and in your spirit that you are greater than any problem than any challenge than any situation than any circumstances greater is he who is in you than he that is in the world you are greater than any problem you are greater than any challenge in fact any problem is your stepping stone you should begin to see things like that don't ever see yourself running ether scatter, you know, being commanded by problems. Don't ever see yourself seeing problems as overwhelming you. Don't ever see yourself running, uh, you know, and becoming the servant of problems. Don't ever see yourself being dominated by problems. Don't ever see yourself being ruled over by problems. And even if you feel overwhelmed by a situation or problem, let, be, let it increase your res resolution. Let it res only increase your resolve. Your resolve to overcome that problem. Let it only re re increase your resolve to, to, to surmount that problem. Let it only re increase your resolve to come over on top of it or to, to just rule over it, to have dominion over it. And every problem, every problem that you are having, every situation that you are having like that is something that you should know that has come, God has allowed to come to you as a stepping stone. It's just your stepping stone. It's not going to destroy you. It's not capable of destroying you. Even if you, it kills your body, even if it kills you, you are still not destroyed because you are living forever. We, you are superior to any problem, any circumstances, no matter what. No matter what. Okay, let me give you some practical illustration of what I'm talking about. I, you know, use problems as your stepping stones. And I like to, I've already spoken about many, you know, many heroes in the Bible who use problems as their stepping stones. But I would like to, I would like to show you uh, a practical illustration of how Jesus used problems as his own stepping stones as well. Even Jesus was using problems as a stepping stone. Now, in Mark, in Mark chapter 1, verses 16 to 20, Mark chapter 1, Verses uh, 16 to 20. Mark 1, 16 to 20. And as he walked by the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. Then Jesus said to them, Follow me, and I will make you become fishers of men. I will make you fishers of men. All right? They immediately left their nets and followed him. When he had gone a little farther from there, he saw James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, who also were in the boat, mending their nets. And immediately he caught them, and they left their father, Zebedee, in the boat with the hired servants and went after him. <laughs> Now, there are so many lessons here about problems and about how Jesus, um, how Jesus, um, used problems as his own stepping stones. How Jesus used problems as his own stepping stones. Number one, Jesus wanted to recruit for himself followers and the key and whatever Jesus did is a is a is an example for us and that should be 
uh, a prototype that we all can follow. So Jesus wanted to have, because, you know, just he was starting a ministry all by himself. And it's just like many of us today. Maybe you are all by yourself starting something. Maybe you are new in a city. Maybe you are new in your town. Maybe you are starting a ministry. And you are saying, how can I start alone? I'm alone. How can I start alone? There is a formula. And this formula, we got it from Jesus. If you are alone and you want to start a problem, a, a, you want to start uh, anything, any project, either it's a business or that is a church or that is a ministry, anything that you want to start. Or maybe you are new where you are and you need to start. How do you start? First of all, you start by adding value to yourself. Make yourself a, make yourself, make yourself so valuable that you have content in yourself. Make sure that you have content in yourself. We have enough content in yourself that will make you into a problem solver. That is number one formula. So for you to start any project or for you to be able to, you know, start or, you know, uh, you know flagship any, any project at all, make sure that you add value to yourself, first of all. Have enough knowledge about, the, the, about life, about principles, about, you know, just make yourself a problem solver. If it's in a particular sphere of life, maybe it's in computer science or in engineering, or make sure that you understand enough to be able to bring solutions. So that's number one. Jesus added, Jesus equipped himself to become a problem solver. So for you to be relevant on the earth, and for you to come to anywhere and of significance, for you to be able to make a way for yourself, for you to be able to make, have breakthrough and be, be able to be successful in anything you do in any area of life, for you to be able to start out and step out and become successful in anything, first of all, it starts by adding value to yourself. Equip yourself to become a problem solver. Become a problem solver. Add value to yourself. Become, prepare yourself to become a problem solver. That's number one point. Number two point, number two formula for you to be able to start any project and be able to use, to be able to use problems as your stepping stones is once you have trained yourself and you have added value to yourself and you have made yourself to be a problem solver, the next thing you need to do is go look for people in trouble. Go look for people in trouble. Go look for people who are in problems. Go and look for people who are struggling with something or the other. And that's what Jesus did with his, his disciples. That was the trick and the formula that Jesus used to even equip his own team and his disciples. You remember, he saw them, some of them were mending their tents, some of them were already about to fold in their tent, they were about to give up in, you know, in, in their daily business and their business was to fish. They were fishing, and they, they were, the Bible said they had labored. In another passage, they had labored all night, and they had worked hard, really hard, but they were not able to catch any fish. So Jesus went and resolved their problem for them. He proved himself as a problem solver. He proved himself as somebody that has enough value, enough content, mm -hmm. and enough wisdom to be able to resolve their problem. He said, you know, go into the deep and put your thing there. So... That is what we all need to do. We need to get ourselves ready to become problem solvers and then be on the lookout. Be on the lookout. We go on a search. Go on a search in that particular area. So, so uh, uh, you know, advertisements or advertisement, marketing, um, promotion, those are part of being on a search. So because there are people out there who don't know that you are capable of resolving their problems. So, and they don't even know you are, exist. Some people don't even know you exist. Some people don't even know that you have some skills to resolve their problems. So you must make yourself available. Jesus didn't just sit down in his own house or in his father and mother's house and say, okay, God, but well, you have anointed me. Ah, 
but I can do everything. Me, me, just look at me. I'm a miracle worker. Why can't you let them come? Let them just come, John. And you know, I will just do the miracle. And oh God, in the name of Jesus, I pray. Bring like your spirit, bring my disciples. Ooh, spirit of the Lord. Ooh, spirit of God. You know, I call them forth. Let them clean their houses right now. Oh, Father, you know the person who's supposed to be my disciple. You know my disciples where they are. Wherever they are right now, I call them forth. In Jesus' name. Let them come to this my place. Let them see me. Let the Holy Spirit guide them. You know, Jesus is, that's, you know, this is the kind of prayers some people are praying in their churches. Holy Spirit, go and touch their heart. Holy Spirit, go and bring them. Holy Spirit, go and bring them here now. Oh, go and lead them. And we are waiting for miracles. We are waiting because we think that the fact that there are no people, you know, that is a problem. And that, since it's a problem, it's a tragedy. No, the fact that you don't have people is also a good problem. It's, just, it's a problem, yes, but it's also a stepping stone. Even that problem of not having people is a stepping stone. Even the fact that nobody is coming is also a stepping stone. So, in Jesus' case, he didn't use his authority. He didn't abuse his authority. I'm beginning to say, oh, in the name of Jesus, bring them. Holy Spirit, go and bring them. You know, there are some churches right now as we are talking, especially in Africa, who are praying like that. You know, there are some churches who are still praying that God, Holy Spirit, should be the one to go and, go, to go and evangelize for them and bring people. You know, so, you know, Jesus didn't do that. Jesus was smarter than that. You know, Jesus is not quite as religious. He's not, he's, Jesus is beautiful. And God is wonderful. They are not religious like I and you. They are not just religious and I and you. They are not religious. They are not religious. They are real. They are real. They follow the laws. They follow the laws and the rules of the earth. I mean, they, they are not hyper, hyper, super, super spiritual, hyper, hyper spiritual and hyper this and just begin to do some rubbish, you know, things that don't even make sense. They don't do that. God doesn't do that. Jesus doesn't do that. Even though they are capable of doing it, they have miracle working power. They are the ones who could have been qualified to be doing that. But Jesus didn't do that. Jesus went out to do his research. What do I mean by research? I mean, he could have gone to different places. He could have gone to market. But why is it that he didn't go to the market? Because he needed fishers of men. He needed people who would be capable of finding people, men. So, you know, so he did this research and he discovered that the kind of people he needed were the people, you know, in the, in the, who were fishermen. But also, he didn't go to the fishermen that didn't have problems. Don't go and be talking to people who don't have problems. They are too comfortable. They don't have, they do, will not pay attention to you right now. So go and find the fishermen, the people that are already in crisis. Look for people who are in crisis because they are their moment of pain and they want to escape from that pain. So Jesus targeted not, I'm sure there were so many you know, fishermen at the, at the, at the, bank, at the bank of uh, Galilee River that day. But he went to the ones who were frustrated already. He went to the ones who were already in pain. He went to the ones who were already, you know, so frustrated, who were already in problems. It is people who respond to you the most and the, the fastest are people who are already feeling that pain, the pain of the need and that you, you have, I mean, the, 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 problem, the solution that you have for them. So Jesus knew that for him to be effective, the formula is to look for people who are, desperate who are in problems so go look for people who are in problems and go provide and supply for them for them the answer and the solution to their problems to their sorrow to their to their to their challenges that's the second formula and the second wisdom we see here from jesus let me tell you the next one jesus made sure that He did not just look for people who were themselves having problems. He also made sure that he looked for people who were used to resolving problems or solving problems. Because these people, you know, even though they were right now in a problem, but they were people who were used to resolving problems. Which is said that one of them, some of them were actually mending their nets. They know how to fix problems. They know how to resolve some problems, some issues. So don't look for people. If you really want to have a team 
or if you really want to have build, because why did Jesus look for people who could solve problems? Because he, he was looking in perspective. He didn't just want to solve the problem of these ones now, and then they are useless. He wants to solve their problem, and then convert them into problem solvers as well. He wants to build a system. He wants to build. He wants to solve their problem, and then be able to instruct them to also multiply him and duplicate him. So he was looking for people who, did, who would not just have problems. You know, for example, if you are just going around, as in my own experience as a pastor, I've discovered that if I just minister to masses and I just solve their problem, that's good. At least they are going to heaven. But if I want to grow the church and if I want to really build, you know, something that will really be dynamic, it is only when, um, as a pastor, I've been able to minister, you know, minister to people or attract people who are themselves used to solving problems, who are themselves used to attending something, people who are, have some track records, people who are themselves walking. They are the only ones that will be that I'll be able to use to build eventually. For example, uh, in my church, at a point we used to have. 8,000 people, 8,000 people. And 8,000 people is a lot of people. That was when we were, no, not 8,000, 15,000 people. We were eight years. Our church was eight years, and we were having 15,000 people in our church. 15,000 people is a lot of people, right? Some people were happy, but you, you know what I discovered? I don't want to offend anybody. No offense. But if you have 15,000 of nobodies, 15,000 of just masses, just gray masses. At least it's a good thing because you have a crowd that is making noise and you have a crowd that is shouting hallelujah and they are going to heaven so you get your reward in heaven. But if you have just that kind of crowd and you have one or two people or ten people who are doers, who are shivers, who are already used to resolving problems, when you are gone, you know what will happen to the, to the masses? They will just scatter. Either they will scatter or they will go and uh, just join other churches. They will look for another, the next anointed man in town. They will just go <laughs> and become another church, other church members. But people who are used to resolving problems, people who are doers, people who are you know, used to, they just need to know, they are already used to achieving something. They are already used to resolving problems. So when you come and help them, you add something to them, they just get the wisdom you give to them and they keep on advancing and, you know, making things happen. They are the ones who will make things happen. Let me tell you the story I started telling you. As a pastor, I have 15,000 people. You know, then one guy, one man, one multi-millionaire came, you know, and we were having so many problems with the government and everything. The problem that 15,000 people couldn't solve, one person solved it. Now, what was the difference? This other person who got saved was a doer. He was, he was a multi-millionaire. He, he was a owner of a bank. His bank was one of the largest banks in the country. He had more branches all over the country than any other bank. He was a senator, member of parliament. Uh, you know, yeah. But he was not a believer. So when he became a believer, and he was a lawyer, I mean, and also. So anyway, this man was be able to bring in so much, uh, so much influence, so much results, that all the 15,000 people couldn't bring. Why? Because he's a doer. He was a problem solver. If you want to do anything, look for people who are used to solving problems. Look for problem solvers. Jesus is a very smart person. Jesus is very smart. Jesus is very smart. Jesus is very, is very strategic. So Jesus did not just pick 12 disciples. Oh, the Holy, Holy Spirit said this. He went to people who were doing something. Use his mind. Some, some of us, don't, we don't want to use our mind. Oh, Holy Spirit, bring, the, you know the person who is best for me. Uh, you know the, okay, Holy Spirit, bring it. I'm waiting on you, oh Lord. Bring my team members. Or oh, bring this and bring that, Holy Spirit. But 
Jesus was not doing like that. He was led by the Spirit, but he was also applying principles. So he used principle, first of all, to resolve the problem of people. He made himself a problem solver. Secondly, he went to resolve the problem of people. Thirdly, he went to look for his team members who are who were used to resolving problems. He, he was strategic in his in his peak. He picked people who were already used to resolving problems because these people were mending mess. They were used to doing it. And they were always resolving problems because they were because of their nature of work. So he went to people who were busy, who were used to resolving problems. Next point. Jesus gave them a higher challenge. He pointed them to a higher problem. So after he had resolved their problems, after he had picked them up to become, you know, to, you know, he, then he, you know, he told them, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. So you are fishing fish right now. You are good. You are doing well. But let me give you a bigger challenge. So Jesus speak people who are not afraid of problems. You know, some people would have said, ah, I have enough problem of my own. No, 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 no. Ah, how can I, even with fish, I cannot even deal with this situation. And now you want to go and make me to fish for a human being. Ah, no, ah, no, ah. You know what that kind of problem, that kind of, the kind of thing will cause? You know the kind of problem that kind of thing will cause? No, ah, no, ah, no. You see my hair now? And my hair is already gray. I don't want more gray hair in my head. <laughs> Those are lazy people. Those are people with the wrong mindset. Jesus didn't pick those ones. He went to pro to pick people to, who were not afraid of problems, who were not afraid of challenges. Jesus went to pick people who were not afraid of challenges, who were not afraid of problems. That's the next formula. You look for people in your team who are not afraid of problems. Look for people in your team who are not scared of challenges, but people who will rather run to challenges to problems. People who have the right perspective about problems, people who have the right approach to problems, people who would rather run to problems than run away from them. Next point, like I already mentioned, Jesus gave them a higher problem to resolve, a higher assignment. Jesus gave them a higher assignment, a higher problem to resolve, higher assignment. Always throw a new challenge to the people around you. Always cast a new vision. Always give them, take them higher. And the ones that will take on the challenge, the ones that would like to go higher, the ones that will take on new challenges, new problems, they are your members. They are your you know, team members. Others that just want to complain and run away from problems and just mourn and build an altar around their problems, they are the pagans. They are the Gentiles. You don't want them around you. You want the people who have the right approach to problems, who know that problems are simply stepping stones. Then what did Jesus say? What did you, what was another thing we saw in Jesus here? Another principle we saw here with Jesus is that Jesus only called those people who had leadership and managerial skills. He, only, he went after people who only had Leadership and managerial skills. Leadership and managerial skills. How do I know this? Well, because it says that Jesus called them, you know, in verse uh, in Mark chapter 1, verse 20. He said, he called them and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired servants. With the hired servants. And went after him. Hired servants, they had men under them. So Jesus went for people who had managerial skills. They were managing people. He went after people who had people, leadership gifts, who were not just gifts, but who were experienced in managing people. He went after people who were used to resolving people's problems. He went after people who were leaders, who are leading people, used to giving people direction, who are used to giving people direction.
<laughs> so you see how Jesus, even Jesus used problems as stepping stones. And that's how he launched his ministry. Some of you are thinking, how should you launch your business? How should you launch your ministry? The example from the life of Jesus and from these teachings will go a long way to helping every one of you to become a better human being, a better son and daughter of God, and a better citizen of our world. Thank you so much.